Okay, so this isn't really a question, but it's a scenario that gives you two different uh, pricing models. And you could get a series of questions about this in order to compare them. So let's have a look at what they actually tell us. The old plan has a $5.25 fixed cost per month, whereas the new plan is $4.50 per month. So based on just those two values, you could say the new plan is cheaper. However, the cost per video or the rate of change is greater. So it's going to be a much steeper slope. So this one might be new and this one might be old. So we don't actually know which one's cheaper or more expensive because we don't know how many videos we will be downloading or this person might be downloading. So how do we compare them? Well, we'll set up a table of values for each equation so that we can graph them. So I'm going to go up by fives. Now I just chose that arbitrarily. You can go up by whatever you like, but remember this is a really small value for the rate. So it's going to go up tiny amounts on my graph. So I'm going to go up by fives instead. And now how do we find these y values? Well, we substitute. So for equation one, it's going to be 5.25. Okay, that's my initial value. So that's going to be my y-intercept. So I can go ahead and put that on the graph. Now you can see that I'm using blue. So I'm going to use blue every time I'm doing this old model. I like to use different colors and I highly recommend it just to separate your work and understand what working is what. Plus 0 0.3 times whatever x is. So what that means is for 5, I'm going to do 5.25 plus 0 0.3 and instead of x, I'm going to multiply that by 5. And that equals 675, so that just goes in the box under y. And I do the same again for 10. So 5.25 plus 0 0.3 times 10, which is 8.25. So that goes in here. And continue to do that until you have all your values. Once they're all entered, you can rewrite them as coordinates if you like. I like to do that just for ease. You can see what they are. Oops, I've forgotten the bracket. And make sure that x is always first and y is second. And x is your horizontal axis and y is your vertical axis. And then plot your points. So we've already got our initial point here. And then we need 5 and 6.75. It's about there. Then we need 10 and 8.25. 15 and 9.75. And 20 and 11.25. And then we just connect them with a straight line. So now that that one's done, we need to do the same thing for our other equation. So looking at the new pricing model, we know that our initial value is 450. So we can go ahead and put that on the graph. And then we can work out the others by substitution. So y equals 0.35. My first value is 5, so I put that instead of x and add 450. And that equals 625, so I'm just going to go ahead and put that in the box and repeat for each value of x. So 0 0.35 times 10 plus 450 equals 8, and then do the same for 15 and 20. Once all they're done, you can rewrite them as coordinates to make it a little bit easier, and then simply put them on your graph. So 5 and 6.25, 10 and 8, 15 and 9.75, etc., and join them by a straight line. Once you've connected those points and formed a straight line, you can see that both lines intersect right here at what appears to be x equals 15. We can take a closer look by bringing back our coordinates from the old or the blue equation. So we're now in a position to answer any series of questions regarding these two equations. We know that the new monthly rate is less than the old one. And at 15 video downloads, they will cost the same amount for the month. So anything more than 15, the old rate was actually cheaper. And anything 
less than 15, the new rate is cheaper. However, once you go over that 15 songs, the new rate turns out to be more expensive. That is shown by the graph here with the green line going higher after these 15 videos have been purchased and the blue line lower as well as by our coordinates and we can verify it algebraically for any of these values of x as well.